Welcome to Think Tank, the Army Cyber Institute at West Point's podcast. At the Army Cyber Institute, we confront the Army's most critical cyber challenges. We engage across our government and with our allies to better understand how cyber is changing conflict and reach out to academia and industry to bridge gaps and stimulate cyber research. We are here to engage you on the latest in cyber and information warfare. everybody. Thank you again for joining uh, the Army Cyber Institute's podcast, Think Tank. Today, we have some amazing special guests. We've got two of our summer interns here with us today. First, we have Jillian Durego from St. John's University and Cadet Kevin Hageman from Bowie State University. Jill, I'm going to start with you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you come to find out about the Army Cyber Institute Summer Internship Program? Because you you are our token civilian to Thank this you. time. We've got 40 <laughs> ROTC cadets, but yeah, tell me. Okay, so where are you from? Tell us uh, a little bit about I'm yourself. I'm from Cornwall, but I live in New Windsor, and okay. that's about 25 minutes away from West Point. But the way I came into this internship is because I've had West Point in my life for a long time because my dad came from the Filipino Military Academy. Oh, that's really and interesting. Thank you. And we've always hosted cadets at our house. And from there, I, I thought West Point was going to have something having to do in cybersecurity, which is my major. So I looked it up and I found it. That's really neat. So I think you've told me before, too, that your your dad was, or your uncle was stationed here at West Point. Yes. Was that, I guess that's another way that you were familiar with West Point. How he came in at West Point. Yeah, kind of. His name is Colonel Goda, and he was a professor here. But I always came to his house. We always had barbecues here and just spent time here. Yeah, you were telling me as we drove past Trophy Point how you got to see a lot of the Fourth of July summer work, uh, yes. Fourth of July summer fireworks shows. Yes, I love them. And one year, I remember they were playing Harry Potter music. Oh man, and Harry Potter! I can't forget that summer. It was amazing because the fireworks were right above our heads. We were just looking up, and the music was playing. It was magical. So you okay? So you are majoring in cyber? Yes, I am. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit about your like the background of that and why cyber? Why did you choose that? Well, first I didn't start out as cyber. Okay. I was. Uh, com sci and then I came into cyber because I didn't really feel connected to com sci but I came into cybersecurity. I met a friend that was very in depth in the field already and he taught me a lot about securing yourself and how scary it can be if you don't know your way around the field and how a lot of people don't know how to secure their own accounts. No, it's true. It's and because cyber is constantly changing. You just, yeah, like how many passwords are we memorizing any day, right? Absolutely. Like like seventy five passwords for everything, and they tell you don't have the same password for all of it. But it's like, um, but and you're we right. forget them. Yes, we forget them, and we pass them along, and we have them written down everywhere where people could find them. Right, and that's not the greatest. It's not. You're right, though. Like it's it's extremely important, and I wish we had better tools for people just to be able to use, or like a helpline, if you will. You know, like how do I secure myself better? So that's that's uh, your friend helped you become more interested in the cybersecurity aspect. Oh, absolutely, yes. But he showed me a lot of things in the field, like what we're working right now. Security keys. We sent encryption encrypted messages back and forth over email. And even though it was a small thing, it got me so fired up about cybersecurity. It was like, wow, I I can hide what I'm sending and no one else can can read it, but my friend can. That's actually, that is very cool. I'm glad you're excited about cyber. Like we need people to be excited about cyber because we're not getting away from it. What are you hoping to gain from this whole experience by being here at the Army Cyber Institute Summer Internship Program? Well, I, I'm learning to explore more in cybersecurity and learning from higher up people in the field, which we have a lot of people that are experienced. And okay. it's my first internship. So oh, how, are you feedback. liking it so far? Absolutely. How does <laughs> Everyone's it feel? nice. Uh, okay, that's good. Oh, well, I'm glad they're, they're good. Um, what's it like being the only civilian in your, your, your group? <laughs> I feel... Like, I'm getting to know the the lingo and getting to know everyone, but... There is a lot to learn. <laughs> military, yes. military in and of itself is just yes. it's a whole different ball game. But at least I think from what I've seen, when you guys are all talking cyber, it's it's pretty, pretty basic language. You guys all understand each other, at mm -hmm. least when you're dealing with the cyber stuff. And then when I don't understand, uh, my peers tell me what something means, the definitions of... They tell me about the vocabulary. Oh, good. Okay. 
Would you recommend this internship to anybody else? Absolutely. I I would tell all my friends about it. But why though? What's why? Why do you think it's important? Well, right now I'm learning something that I had never gone into before. With coding, I have very basic coding experience, but right now with my peer Kevin Hageman, he's teaching me a lot. Oh, and that's good. Especially about Python, even though we're not strictly coding through Python. But just, again, like you said, even learning from each other, and you might not necessarily be researching or doing anything in that particular field, but everybody brings like a little bit of something yes. extra to the game. Absolutely. That's really neat. So what, what things has have you been able to teach Kevin? Oh, <laughs> we went over at Wireshark the other day, which I ran maybe once. Uh-huh. So some details on that, but we're learning together. That's really good. And you, you have been teamed up with Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Hamilton, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, how's that working with uh, Colonel Hamilton? He's wonderful. He's very nice. Uh, whenever we ask him questions, he voluntarily just gives us his time, and he's a great guy. I know he's more of like the technical side. How are you picking up on that aspect? I ask a lot of questions, and it's it's been going okay. Okay. That's good. What have you learned so far about this internship? What, what sticks out the most in your mind? Especially with passwords. Um, I'm not very good with my own passwords. So using a, a physical token in order to keep all of our passwords has inspired me to do that with my own life. And I'm planning to buy one myself. Oh, that's really neat. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about where you're from. Where are you coming from? Uh, my hometown is Columbia, Maryland. Okay. All right. Well, then I heard you got like a tour of West Point your your like first couple of days that you're here from Dr. Sobiesk. Is this your first time visiting West Point? Yes, it is my first time visiting West Point. I back in when I was in high school, I actually thought about attending the United States Military Academy, mm -hmm. but I scrapped the idea because I would have started trying to attend that too late. Okay, but I mean, you're in an ROTC program right now, and how are you? How are you enjoying that at Bowie State University? Uh, I'm actually really enjoying it. One of the biggest differences that I would say from my ROTC compared to other battalions is it's actually an HBCU, which is a historically black college university. Okay. So I've taken a lot of African-American history classes. and But I think that's really neat that you're taking a lot of those cultural classes and learning about different things in a different um, aspect and perspective. How in the world did you come to learn about the Army Cyber Institute Summer Internship Program? Well, actually, uh, it was in my MS2 year. MS is military science. It was my second year classes for the Army. And my professor, Captain McDonald, had forwarded my class in a list of different internships through the Army that we were able to apply for. And the ACI internship was actually my first choice. Was it? Okay. Why, why is that? Being that I am a computer science major, I thought it was really important that I see what the technical side of is in the Army um, through, like, the cyber branch, the military intelligence branch, and maybe community or signal. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that would best put me in the position to put those branches on my top five list. And so you're really hoping to branch cyber then, or c cyber signal, am I hopefully in one of those, those three? Yes, ma'am. Before I got to this internship, cyber wasn't on my top list because, or wasn't number one on my list because I hadn't started going through the steps for the CLDP, which is the Cyber Leadership Development Program. Mm -hmm. But after coming to this internship and learning more about it and some of the requirements, I'm confident that I would like to put cyber as my number one branch. That's really cool. You've been here about two weeks, just like Jill. I think you two got here at the same time. What have you, what's the thing that stands out the most to you for having what you've learned so far during this internship? The experience I'm getting because, you know, some of the some of the experiences I'm gaining at the ACI internship aren't anything that can be provided to me back at my uh, home university. Uh, one of the requirements for this internship was a secret security clearance, whereas uh, the classes at university are more broad, and I'm learning to be more in-depth on my research to a specific project that I've been assigned at ACI, whereas at class it's just a broad topic that everybody's learning at the same time. Okay. What are you hoping to gain by this whole experience, the summer internship program, being up here at West Point, learning more about cyber? What, what are you hoping to gain? I'm looking to improve my skill set. The classes only teach you so much, whereas the experience portion is more valuable. And I think when it comes to computer science, having a broader uh, knowledge base and being well-rounded is really important. You know, back at university, I've only learned Java, C, and C++, which are coding languages. 
but my project actually requires the use of Python, and that's slowly becoming one of the top languages in cybersecurity and computer science, and so I'm excited to learn more about it. Did you have any background in Python prior to coming here? I did not. I had no background in Python, so I'm basically starting from scratch here. Oh, that's really... Okay, so who's helping you with that? My mentor is actually Lieutenant Colonel Hamilton, mm -hmm. and he's guided me through that through the use of Django, which is a web development application for creating uh, websites. And so basically, I code on, um, right now I'm using Notepad as my ID. It doesn't really show you bugs and everything. But when I try and run it through Django and Heroku, which are two different web development servers, uh, it'll show me the bugs, and I'm able to go into my code through Python and debug those. So are you appreciating having someone with more technical side help you through that? Of course, yeah. You know, he's great. Whenever I come into a problem that I'm not able to debug myself, he, he's able to come over and assist me and show me what the problem was so I'm able to correct them in the future if I run into them. That's really neat. Do you think you're going to be able to take any of this knowledge and take it back to your, your university or even like your fellow ROTC cadets and explain some of this stuff to them? Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be able to do that. I know back at my university, there are a couple of cadets that actually are looking into cyber. We have a lot of computer science majors at my university, and the knowledge that I provide to them could potentially help them come to this internship and learn for themselves what it's like. Yeah, are you, would you recommend this internship to them? I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're looking to branch cyber, you know. Uh, we were talking to Colonel Hall the other day about um, the cyber branch and the branching and everything, and um, some of the universities I know in the ROTC programs are having trouble getting information on cyber branching and everything, but after speaking to him and having sort of like a fishbowl mm -hmm. with him and asking any of our questions, it's really cleared up the process to me and I'm able to bring that back to my university. Pretty interesting. So no matter what kind of question you have, I'm sure there's someone at ACI who could probably help point you in the right direction. But I'm glad you got that information from Colonel Hall. So it makes you feel a little bit more confident about the process of branching cyber or maybe getting into it later if you don't get it as your first choice? Of course. That's good. All right. So I know that uh, both of you have teamed up with Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Hamilton with uh, the research that you guys have been doing the past two weeks. Can you, can you talk about that? Talk about what you guys are researching. In my instance, um, the FIDO2 project was the first choice on my list because it really interests me. Uh, I know that my computer science background would really help on this project because it has to do with coding a lot. Right. Even though I didn't have a background in Python, I knew I would be able to learn it because it's said to be one of the more easier computer science languages. And that's basically why I chose this project as my number one. As for me, it was my first choice too. I read the description for the project and I remembered something I learned in cybersecurity class. My One of my intro classes was talking about security keys and I wanted to learn more. Basically, when we started out our research, we were under the idea that WebAuthn and FIDO2 were the same thing and that they were interchangeable terms, but conducting more research showed us that they're actually different. WebAuthn is actually the standards that FIDO2 follows, and uh, WebAuthn was created by the W3C, which is the World Wide Web Consortium. So they have teamed up with the FIDO Alliance. Uh, would you like to explain what FIDO means? I can explain what FIDO means. FIDO means Fast Identity Online, and it's a movement for major companies to take away passwords and to make authorization stronger. To uh, tail on to the end of that, um, the goal of it is to remove passwords in the future. You know, we've talked about different websites. There's so many social medias and websites online that uh, you have to remember passwords for. And so the goal of this is to take away passwords from the equation because that's how security breaches occur. Like Google or Facebook, for example, they have to hold databases full of your, all of our passwords. And so those are more easily uh, hacked into. Therefore, you give up your information to hackers. And as we mentioned before, passwords are so easy to to push around and to write down and to lose. So in in order to take away that portion, we'd like to implement hardware tokens. Basically, the idea is that you have this physical key that you would carry around with you on your keychain or wherever, for example. They also have smaller nano versions that you would keep plugged into your USB and your laptop. It's more uh, discreet. And so when you go to authenticate to a website and log in, you actually don't need the password. You just plug the device into your USB port on your laptop or computer, and 
you would type in your username and you're able to add a pin to the hardware token, so like a four digit pin, and that's called universal second factor authentication. And that's with FIDO1 technology. But FIDO2 technology actually pushes towards multi-factor authentication, where you would add biometrics or iris scanning through the use of perhaps your phone, or I know certain laptops have uh, fingerprint scanners. And so that adds another layer of security to it as well, making it multi-factor. Well, I want to thank both of you for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys taking out the time from your research because I know your time is very limited. You only have three weeks total. So even just this short, short little time frame that we're doing a podcast still takes away from what you guys are able to do. But I know I know the Army Cyber Institute really appreciates you guys coming out and doing the summer internship program with us. I know Colonel Hamilton thoroughly enjoys having you guys, and he really, really appreciates the help that you're helping with his research, because it's not just a standalone project. I know you're actually feeding into a bigger research initiative for the Army. So um, thank you very much for your time. I hope both of you enjoy the rest of the summer internship program here and get to take away positive aspects about, about cyber from this whole process. So thank you again. Next time on Think Tank. Different effects of how people physically change and react to music. And it's been a wild, wild, fun time of study because it is everywhere. It's not, do we have an effect? It's, how did you not know we did? Thank you for joining us. 